Cool. Alright. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm Drew. Uh, and we are going to talk about metrics. Um, what we mean by metrics is not um, your business metrics, but your application metrics. Um, and figuring out how well your application is doing. Uh, so this is a PSA. Um, it's a serve public service announcement for you to make your application better. Because um, if you're not tracking metrics, you're missing out. Um, and so why do you want metrics? Uh, you want metrics because they allow you to know how your application is doing, know the health of your application, whether things are working or not. Uh, the best way to figure out if your code is broken is if your users can use it or not. If people aren't able to register for your website, you probably, uh, you probably broke your registration. Um, and you might want to look at that. So how we use metrics is interesting. We use them in a couple of different ways. It could be uh, the first way that we use them is for planning. Right now, we are in the process of moving off of uh, individual session stores into a shared session store. Um, and in order to do this, we had to know, you know, well, how many times are sessions read every minute? How many you know new sessions are written every minute? You know, without these you know numbers, we can't really plan. So by having actual real numbers, we're able to plan effectively and plan for how things should be. We also use it to find problems. Uh, who has alerts of any sort set up for their application? Not usually. <laughs> <laughs> and someone just got one. <laughs> Um, so, who gets reports that things are broken? <laughs> so, whenever we get an alert that, or, you know, an alert could be, you know, one of our support people pinging us to say, hey, someone in the forums reported this being weird. Uh, the first thing that we end up doing is bringing up the appropriate metrics. Um, because being able to look at a graph to decide, you know, well, let's see, how, you know, this person says that they can't register. Um, you know, are other people able to register? Is this, you know, one person having a problem or is this an actual application problem? Are we seeing a spike in, you know, registration failures if people try to register through one method in particular? Well, maybe that method is broken and not the entire process, which is why, you know, when we try, it seems to be fine. Uh, so finding problems. It's great also for finding problems that we don't even know that we have. Um, so, we have uh, at ClearSpring a lot of servers because we have you know, a lot of applications. Um, if you can see this graph, uh, it's very clear that something is wrong with this server. Um, <laughs> that all the other ones are doing you know, normal, they're acting you know, in a similar fashion, but this one, you know, something happened. And you know, without actually, you know, <laughs> You might not get an alert on it. Maybe you know. Maybe it's reporting fine for your alerting, or maybe you don't have an alert set up for this particular metric. You know, now you see that something is broken. Um, so, what do you learn on? Uh, this is great for figuring out what you should learn on. But being able to look at a graph, you can see that you know. Oh well, maybe if we rise this much quicker uh, before you know versus how things were before, something's wrong. You know, looking at this graph, something seems out of ordinary. And because we track our metrics, we're able to see this and understand that something's wrong. We should set up an alert so that this doesn't happen again. Or as we found uh, at least once, uh, maybe you're having something really cool happening and you should blow some press about it. Yeah. Um, you're just talking about sessions? Is that yeah. This is uh, no, this one is, I don't even know what this one is, uh, but uh, yeah, sessions, our sessions look pretty uh, similar, sort of, you know, cyclical throughout the day, and throughout the week. It's Brainiac information. Yes, Brainiac. Brainiac is our uh, Java server, uh, but yes, yeah, so that explains everything. Uh, during the comic books, I think it explains something, I don't really know. Um, so how you might do uh, metrics tracking from PHP, uh, obviously we don't have any, any sort of persistent data store in PHP natively, and you've got like databases, but if you're hitting a database every single time something happens, ideally, uh, or ideally you should be tracking many, many things, and so that's quite inefficient. Um, so the, the probably the most popular thing people turn to is something like StatsD, or specifically StatsD really, um, which is a great thing, it is dead simple, uh, and that's really, really important, because if it's not simple and easy to use, then you're not going to do it, and you should be doing this for lots of things. Um, but the downside to 
the stats here is that it is really simple. Uh, it only does a couple of different things. You can count things, so you can say, oh, this thing happened, this thing happened, this thing happened, or two of this thing happened. Uh, so you just have an incrementing counter, uh, or you can time things within a session. You can say, oh, this thing took this long to happen during this session. Um, and it only talks to Graphite, which is uh, a graphing library or a sort of metrics collection aggregation and graphing uh, server software. Um, so uh, to take a step in a little bit of a different direction, the impetus for us starting to do a, a large-scale metrics project was uh, our Java team at ClearSpring started using this package called Metrics. Uh, metrics is a proper noun because it's the thing by Coda Hale, uh, who works at Yammer, and it provides all sorts of advanced, fancy maths uh, for your metrics. Uh, so what you can do is you can create, uh, well, I'll get into like, this, different types of metrics, but it does a lot of the, the hard work mathematically uh, to make things you want to count or monitor or whatever, uh, make them both interesting and uh, easy to follow what's going on. Uh, so the different things that it offers, it offers gauges. Gauges are simple, instantaneous reads uh, of uh, something that's going on, like how many open sessions do we have? Um, uh, a timer is pretty obvious, is how long does this thing take to happen, so how long did this data, database operation take to happen, how long did this uh, you know, asynchronous call to our huge data store take to complete. Um, a counter uh, is, is what I mentioned before with stats D, and that's just an incrementing number. You know, how many people have we had logging ever? We just increment that number and continue to increment it. A meter is the one that we found to be the most useful. Uh, so a meter is a rate sort of thing, which is what we were seeing before about that, that, um, that Brainiac graph uh, with the big dip in it. So that's sort of like, how many emails are we sending per minute right now? Uh, something we see go up during the middle of the day, and then subside the, uh, during nighttime, uh, or I guess a low low period is not necessarily nighttime. Um, and meters provide, in the in code of metrics package, meters provide you things uh, like the, uh, not just the mean, median, and mode uh, rate, but also the, the uh, so meters provide. So mean, median, mode, uh, 99 percentile. That's mean. Uh, yeah, percentile average. averages of, uh, of uh, rates. Uh, throughout the day. Yeah. So throwing out your outliers that you know might be throwing out for day. You know, maybe someone has a bad connection. You know, maybe one out of every you know five hundred uh, calls to your database takes twenty seconds instead of you know the twenty milliseconds that you expect it to take. Uh, Ninety nine percent of throw out those outliers. Yeah. Uh, and then histograms, which is not a really good image for histograms. So here's James K. Polk. Um, <laughs> Uh, but histograms, which actually, sorry, histograms are the ones that do percentiles. Uh, meters do, uh, because of doing rates, they do, uh, most useful ones that we use are uh, Unix load average style rates. So one minute average, five minute average, and 15 minute average, they're weighted. It's the most recent data, is the most important. Uh, and the histograms uh, can actually be either weighted or uh, unweighted. So unbiased, unweighted histograms treat all your data the same. Bias histograms treat the most recent data as more important, so you can sort of see problems creeping up. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, obviously, uh, as we all know, we don't have uh, persistent, or the way most of us run PHP, uh, it's process per request, so you don't have any way to track things uh, across requests unless you were to use like your database, but since you're doing so many small little things with metrics, uh, that's probably not the best way to go. Um, so, how do, you, how do you do this tracking of things across requests? Uh, so, to solve this problem, we wrote uh, a handful of pieces of code and leveraged some existing open source projects. Yeah, so uh, essentially how our system works is that something happens. Um, this could be, you know, the database gets read. This could be, you know, a person logs in, or we have a failure in the return token from Facebook and someone trying to register. You know, something happens. Uh, and it goes to a PHP library that we wrote called Fetcher. Fetric then sends it via UDP to Metric Capture, which is a Java app that is running on our web boxes and incorporates Coda Hale's Metric package that we just learned about. Um, from there, we send it onto Graphite or onto Ganglia, and then also onto Graphite to give us two different ways to then view our metrics in persistence. And for Fetric, Fetric is really easy to set up. All you have to do is say where you want to send it. Um, you know, for us, it's localhost, and you know, we have a port that we send it to. Uh, we also can have, uh, include a prepend spring to it, so that if you want to, and how we use it is, we do the app name and the environment. 
so you know if your dev machine and your test machine are on the same box, you know, then you can have you know that you know app being uh, blog dash test or blog dash dev. And this way, when you look inside your metrics, you can easily see you know and figure out. And Gateway and Graphite both allow ways to segment you know based on specific parts of a metric string. Um, so an option that you have with it is that you can either send them as they come in, uh, so you know, this metric happened, fired off, this happened, fired off, or uh, the default is to wait until the shutdown hook fires, and then when, you know, since your PHP script, you know, for your, to generate your web page, you know, runs through everything, delivers the content, and then it runs a shutdown hook that we hook into, and you know, then send all the metrics at once. Uh, so that way, you know, you're not waiting and you know to send metrics. It's not, you know, you never have to worry about it slowing down the performance of your application. Uh, all right. So uh, metric catcher is the other big piece that we wrote, uh, and it, as Aaron mentioned, is a job app. We run it on our web servers. It's low in resources because really all it is is a uh, simple wrapper around uh, Codehale's metrics. Um, so what it does is it just you start it up and it just runs forever, so it provides pers persistence there, and it receives uh, JSON uh, from Fetric, the Fetric commits. Uh, so you, when, you, when you do uh, you know mark a meter in Fetric, uh, it just sends off a little JSON packet to Metric Fetric. Uh, metric Fetric very simply turns that into uh, a code head metric uh, and then keeps track of it, uh, and then Metric Fetric periodically uh, outputs it to either Gamma or Graphite, uh, whatever you configure or move. Um, the JSON format is very, very simple, so if you were, you were using something that wasn't uh, PHP, so you couldn't use metric, uh, it's really easy to write it yourself. You're just passing the name, uh, the value of metric, and the type, um, and then the, the timestamp. Uh, so again, very, very simple and straightforward. Um, that's, this whole thing is all about simplicity, because it's not simple, you're not going to use it. Um, Ganglia, so Aaron mentioned Ganglia and Graphite, which are two different uh, metrics tracking servers that we use. Uh, Ganglia was written for uh, really large deployments of very, very similar servers. Uh, initial years. I think it's a, a Berkeley project just for ma managing their uh, big time processing clusters. Uh, it's really great for that. Uh, it has lots and lots of built in system metrics, system level metrics like you know, your, your load average, your CPU load, your network IO, all sorts of those things. Um, and it provides an interface that's great for viewing a whole bunch of similar machines. Uh, all at once. And so that white graph you saw before where that one thing dropped out and died, that is an example of one of the graphs. Yeah, and so this is, this is sort of the, the basic um, uh, game related graph, so it provides a great overview. You can see it's talking about 60 hosts here, 281 CPUs, and you can see, you know, this is our load average, and so everything's good because we're below the red line of load average that is defined as bad. Um, so it's, a, it's sort of a good gross overview uh, of what your metrics are doing. Um, it provides pretty good drill down into individual machines. Um, so this is the load, CPU, uh, memory, and network for one machine. And then you can drill down into any of these metrics um, and see it by different time periods. So this is just uh, hour, two hour, four hour day. And also uh, down below this, it'll show by week and by month and maybe by last year or something like that. Um, but it allows you to really get a good idea of things that may be cyclical like this. Uh, like this is, or I guess this is just a day. Um, so, so there's something here happening on the hour every hour, and then it stops happening for some reason. So perhaps that's a little bit risky, or that big uh, spike at the end. Um, but also we use Graphite, which is uh, in many ways just a competing thing to gain. You know, they, they do largely the same thing. They collect and persist metrics, and then allow you to view graphs on those. Um, we spent a lot of time looking at Gangly and Graphite and a couple other smaller projects uh, when we were first deciding on what we wanted to use. and. Uh, Particular data guys really like Ganglia because of all the built-in metrics, metrics tracking they provided for machine level stuff. Um, but we sort of all agree that Graphite provides much nicer graphs. Uh, and so what we what we showed earlier that Brainiac graph, uh, we show a bunch of things like that here. That one's nice and empty. This is very useful. Um, but we have uh, we we have a lot of graphs that will cycle through here. Uh, and it's, it's it's a lot nicer to look through. It's a lot easier to compose uh, different metrics on the same graphs so you can compare them. So this is things like, I think this is our email send rate, and then these are the email errors. Uh, you can see they track uh, together, which despite being errors, you know, you want them to be together to some degree. Uh, if one spikes and the other doesn't, then something odd is going on at least. Um, and also, so viewing metrics, uh, to go on a little bit of tangent, is really important here. 
Uh, we have this display just in our office, and uh, the number of times that we sort of notice them, some notice them to say, "Hey, that looks different than it normally does when you're walking by." Uh, we've, we've noted, we've sort of fixed or just collected information about a lot of different things. Yeah, I mean the fact that you know it's right by our snap table, and so if we're going to get a snap. Um, odds are you're going to look at the metrics and be like, oh, you know, while I eat this granola bar, how are we doing? You know, what is being searched for? And, you know, how many people are registering for our site right now? Yeah. yeah. What does GB stand for? Uh, gold brick. Because <laughs> so, we make so, money off of our metrics, because metrics are money. <laughs> uh, so, one of the, some of the problems that come up uh, with our system still, that we are still working on something, is trying to figure out what should I bring. Um, you know, even with you know all of our information, figuring out you know the proper graph that will give you the right information is a challenge. It's sort of like logging. You want to do log lines for lots of things, so if you need to, you can look at them. You want to do metrics for lots of things, so if you come with an idea or you know have a problem, you can go back and look at it. Um, right now, we're collecting eighty thousand metrics uh, every minute. Uh, which eight thousand individual metrics. Yeah, which works out to 115 million data points every day. Um, so this is the so, big question. Yeah. Um, you know, so some of our application questions that we come up with is, you know, so registration. So we offer uh, five different ways that you can register for our website. You, know, you can register with email and, you know, a password. You can register with Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google, or general open ID. Um, so how do we view, you know, a failure in Facebook spiking shouldn't set off, you know, like alarms and say like, oh, well, more people, you know, it's that one segment is failing and we need to do something about that one part of it. But at the same time, we do want to see overall, you know, where is the failure rate. And so that's one of the challenges we're figuring out what to graph. Um, also, changing time periods in graphs is... Somewhat of a pain. So Graphite and Ganglia are great at building the graphs, um, but they're not necessarily the most user friendly for generating the graphs. Uh, Graphite uh, has a URL spring API, uh, for lack of a better description, <laughs> where you just manipulate what is in the URL spring and it will build a nice pretty graph for you. Um, but you know, when you have a string that's, you know, Couple hundred characters long because you have you know four different metrics and you're summing up three different ones you know and doing other calculations for your graph you know that string becomes hard to read and hard to bust hard to edit. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, drilling down to specific machines can be a challenge. Uh, you know, if we see a spike in uh, you know reads uh, session reads only on one machine, you know, well maybe our load balancer is that. And being able to drill down and figuring out that it's one machine that's the problem, not the entire application. And so we've, we've taken the time to do things like manually compose these graphs that are uh, you know, all of our web servers and all the session reads aggregate. Uh, and it's great, but when there's a spike, yeah, is it a spike because we're getting lots of traffic, or is it a spike in something because uh, one machine is falling over? Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Uh, that's pretty much our overview of metrics. Um, we'd love to answer questions about metrics that you guys might have. Yeah. Your 80,000 metrics, I assume that's the uh, same kind of category of metric, but you're tracking it off of different pieces of your application? or I mean, trying to get a sense for what's in there. What do, you, what do we need to think about when we're building metrics? Yeah, so we have a number of different types of hosts uh, in ours. The bulk of the hosts are our uh, Java processing clusters, uh, of which we have a couple, like 80 machine clusters. And those, each one tracks about 150 metrics. Those, they're the smaller machines that we track. Um, they're tracking basically your normal system metrics. Uh, so, you know, disk I.O., network I.O., memory usage, CPU usage, load average all those sorts of things, as well as uh, a bunch of JVM metrics. Um, so thread counts, you know, uh, even space and st stuff like that. Um, and uh, then on our, because those, those are sort of, we just want gross information about those because it is, you know, a big cluster. Uh, you can't be looking at lots and lots of tiny little things on it and really gross information gets you what you want. That, that is this, this machine not pulling its weight for some reason? Um, for our uh, smaller numbers of machines, like our web servers, um, our Brainiac Java servers, our API Java servers, 
uh, those we track uh, for the web servers, actually, we're tracking 2,000 metrics for each of the web servers. Um, and those are things, that in addition to system level metrics, um, we're tracking things like the session reads and writes, uh, number of hits to certain pages, uh, for pages that we are particularly concerned about, particularly, int particularly interested in. Um, uh, we also track, so we have uh, our uh, analytics for publishers uh, is, um, you know, getting the requests from the data store. You know, how long is that taking? Uh, we also do, and it was an issue about myself, was, uh, so that page Ajax is in all of, uh, like, multiple different components. And so we had to figure out a way to track metrics for that page load from the very beginning of that first request all the way through to all the AJAX components being completely rendered. Uh, so what we did for that is we actually start a timer, uh, say output it as uh, a JavaScript variable, and then start another timer in JavaScript that we then uh, read once the, or end once the, you know, all the AJAX is loaded, and add those two together and send it to the server to log in. So to sort of answer your question is that uh, basic server level metrics um, are, are a good place to start, but you often sort of already have those handled uh, by something like if you have Nagios, sort of a stock Nagios setup, uh, handles a lot of those and will alert on those. Um, so they often aren't as interesting. What's more interesting are things in your own application, and something like Fetric makes it really easy to just spin that up. Uh, you, you can just set up a Graphite server, set up Fetric and Metric Catcher, and just start you know, logging whatever you want. So I think I think you were touching on, but I want to clarify the like there's the system performance, but then there's also how you're measuring um, user behavior. Yeah. Like, uh, where they go, what controls they use, what mm -hmm. pages they go to. Is that also part of? The yeah, we do it all in one place. Yeah. yeah. Which the experience as well, right? So as they're doing that, what kind of experience are they having? Kind of to that point of you know, okay, so how long does that take? Right. Um, so that's sort of another category of things. That... This is Will Meyer, also from Clearstream. Not just some random guy who's answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference between a uh, gauge and a meter? Uh, so a gauge no. is uh, <laughs> a gauge is it, it essentially it's, it's not true. Like I'm sure Aaron's done the same thing I've done. Try like in the first few weeks of using this, I read through the list of things too many times. A gauge is an instantaneous measurement, and that's it. Um, and normally it's something you back with your own thing, like uh, the only time I can think of using one is in Java land when I have like uh, a set and I do uh, a gauge for like, you know, set.size uh, and so uh, the metrics tracking system every minute hits that gauge and then it just runs set.size and tells me the size that variable and then so we graph and we see the size change. So I actually just thought of a metric that we should add. Uh, that would be a good example of a gauge. <laughs> uh, and that, you know, we send uh, emails to our publishers uh, with analytics stats, and we could probably have a gauge that is the remaining emails to send uh, to make sure that it is declining at a correct pace. That's right. And then a meter uh, is the one that's a rate over time. Uh, and so that one, the way you interact with the code is you just mark to it. You say, this thing happened, this thing happened, this thing happened. And then the metrics tracking the code says, oh, this thing happened. Uh, 70,000 times in a minute, uh, I'm going to call that rate, you know, because of the previous minutes, I'm going to call it, you know, 65. Um, so, again, meter is the one we find most useful because the rates of things are often the most informative. Uh, so that gauge for the emails, mm -hmm. um, would you track that through the database or somewhere? In um, so, a lot of that gets stored in memory, so we could do it, you know, from memory. Like it's one script that's processing, you know, a huge. Yeah, it's a long running. PHP yeah, it's a long running PHP script. script. Yeah. Okay. And so actually, that that's sort of a good example we can build on is we uh, that's something we should have a gauge on um, for the number of emails left to send. So if we're like you know middle of the day and someone says that they they haven't gotten their email yet, we can go and look and say, oh yeah, we still have this many. It seems to be going slowly. And then we can look at a meter of our send rate and say, yeah, it is going slower than last week when we compare the two time periods. Um, and we can look at a counter to see uh, how many emails have we sent since we started counting them. Yeah, and so if we have, you know, 
very few left to send, yet we haven't sent very many, then we must be throwing some exceptions and exploding somewhere. And, things like that. and maybe also a timer to see how long it takes to send each of True, so you start talking about this, you know, <laughs> metrics and everything. Yeah. So how do you prioritize what metrics you look at, and then how do you use that to make decisions on a daily basis? Like how often do you go to this, and how often does that inform what you do? So we probably look at metrics, I mean, because we have it on our wall, right. um, you know, we look at our metrics often. Uh, you know, those those that we have sort of anointed and chosen to be on the wall. So how did you choose those? Ones that we had problems with, really. Yeah, the, the areas of code that break the most, um, you know, are good candidates for it. Uh, the things that are going to, you know, cause the most problems if they are, you know, not where they're supposed to be. Yeah, so if your response time is, you know, not at, you know, say you're aiming to have all responses in uh, 800 milliseconds, which is, I know, what Etsy is aiming for for this year. Um, you know, if it's not, if it's above that, then that's a problem. So that would be one to track. So it's, you know, what are the metrics that are important to you and important to your organization? Um, it's sort of a uh, TSA problem, if you will. Like, you can, every time you have a problem, you can say, oh, we should metric that and then be checking that all the time, but then you're only playing catch up. It is sort of, when you do new things, you should think about what should I be tracking here. And also, so it's, it's the hardest part. Yeah, if something breaks, add a metric, save the graph that you would look at, and if you get reports that it's bad again, well, you know to look at that, that graph. Yeah. It's also good if you know something has changed. You know, a lot of people like to do, uh, you know, test-driven refactoring, where they'll put up all the tests, they'll refactor something, oh, hey, the tests are all good. It also works once you go to deployment. If you're already tracking those metrics, you do the deploy, and if the lines don't drop or spike, you know, sure five, 10, point. 30 minutes after the deploy, then hey, you probably did something not bad. Yeah, so I mean, go back to the finding problems thing. We found uh, problems after doing deploys when, yeah, things just look different. Uh, yeah. But it also allows us uh, to easily know how long we had a problem. Because we have the graph, uh, so we've had uh, yeah. in the past problems where you know we use soap for one of our uh, web services, and you know times out um, and causes you know the site to just stop functioning for a minute or two while we wait for that soap call. Um, you know we can look at like if someone sees this happen, you know, and we can you know quickly make a change so that you know ignore that soap call for now. Um, and, you know, we can look and see, oh, well, actually that wasn't a problem for more than a minute because our metrics didn't drop. Back on the architecture side, uh, you said metric pushes JSON requests to, what was the job service wrapper? Uh, metric metric. Yeah. And then that, so those run on the same box, right? Yeah, they run on the same box, they don't have to. And then metric metric, does that push it to a store or does that push it right to... It pushes it to Ganglia, uh, which is the metrics, sort of persistent metrics persistence application. Uh, and Ganglia, basically what it does is it just collects them and writes them to disk. So Ganglia catches all, so if you have 50 servers, right, it catches all of those at once and then exactly. it merges them all and that's all that merging? Or do you have uh, so normally you, uh, the way that we, we do it is uh, we track all of those things individually. So each server is basically a namespace. Um, and then each, uh, as Aaron mentioned before, you know, application things are different name spaces, yeah. And then so we do have like uh, for you know those sixty machine clusters. You, you, you're not going to go look at each single one. So you say you know star server this metric, um, and then you see the aggregate from that. And also all the communication is via UDP rather than TCP uh, because we actually uh, in a previous metric system that we were using uh, one day had a problem where. Uh, TCP connections were hanging on the script and were causing, it was in fact, our metric collection was causing our site to crash. <laughs> yeah, because it was going through, you know, crossing the page and then uh, said, okay, send off the metrics and it couldn't establish a connection, it would time out and then return. Um, yeah, so with UDP, it just, you know, it throws it away and keeps on moving. And all those are open? Open source? Uh, yes, yes, they are. Yeah, so yeah, metric catcher and metric that we have written are uh, github.com slash clearspring. Uh, you'll find them there. Uh, Ganglia is, a, a, again, I think a Berkeley project. You'll find it. Search for Ganglia. You won't find neurology until a few links down. Um, and Graphite as well is, uh, is a, an open source project. So, for example, I have a website that has a registration page. How do I add metrics to that? So if 
you download Fetcher, uh, just go to GitHub and either clone it or whatever, just get it. Uh, include the main file, there's instructions in the readme. Um, and then all you have to do is, you know, set up your, you know, initialization, which is where you send it to, uh, and then, you know, put your calls in. So, you know, Fetcher meter and, you know, a name and a value. Uh, you know, Fetcher timer start, Fetcher timer end. And you know, so you add it to the page or to the form? Uh, you would add it to the PHP that's processing, the probably pro processing the form. Yeah. And so yeah, and then for your for your example, like number of registrations, you would add like I guess you just want to counter uh, maybe a meter if you, if you get lost of registration. If you're getting you know, a few a day, it's not going to be very interesting a meter. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you add that to the processing form. And as for initialization, you could just set it to to uh, point to local host, and the metric catcher is the other piece of it that you need. Uh, now again, you go to the, clear screen, or the, the GitHub clear screen page, uh, grab metric catcher, it's just a job app, you just run it, single command line, don't even think about it. Um, thereafter, you just sort of run it, no hop or something. Uh, uh, it would, uh, if you had a server page or that handles the form, it would know whether the registration was for, from Facebook, like you were saying? Or yeah, I mean, you would just have to put it you know, in the appropriate spot the appropriate in your code. Part. Yeah. Um, and you know, also, if you look at uh, I mean, in GitHub in the README. Uh, so you don't, if you don't want to set up a local instance of metric catcher, but you still want to, you know, listen to make sure your metrics are getting sent normally, uh, there's just a little, uh, you know, function that uses netcat so that you can listen. Uh, yeah, but if you want to be super, super simple and not have to set up like Angular or Graphite, yeah, don't even worry about metric catcher. You set up metric, set up a netcat listening instance, point to a file, uh, and you can see things as they come in. Um, so I guess that's sort of like log lines, really. Yeah. Um, but you know, in the future, you can upgrade to a metrics tracking system. Uh, but as for Ganglia versus Graphite, um, if you don't have any requirements that require Ganglia or you're like Ganglia, I would suggest Graphite. Um, it's slightly easier to set up, but still a bit complicated. Uh, but it's a lot more interesting to use um, and better for browsing around and looking at things. And it has the URL, you know, <coughs> format, that, so you can just make changes if you want to. Yeah. <coughs> You said uh, this was more efficient than typing or sending to the database. Uh, is that is it just because the database interaction is more costly than going? Yeah, through? exactly. Because you know, database interaction, there's lots of protections about your data and things. Uh, this is just you know, it sends it off in UDP, so there's you know, it's, it's basically it's not doing any any you know socket setup. It's not doing any uh, any real protection, uh, and hopefully you're not using metrics like. <laughs> tracking, tracking financial things that happen, not the actual. <laughs> the, place, just, uh, the place that you're sending the data, right, is in this case, it's a package that's designed to receive metrics data and present that with user interface and all of that. So, like, Angling Graph are designed to accept this event data and then be able to report that back. And you just sort of shove it in the database. It's kind of the same as just shove it in the log file. Well, it may be there, but you yeah. know, you've not gotten any sort of value out of it. Right. You just sort of shove it somewhere, but right. well then what? At the same time, I think my question was whether or not just firing it off this way, but I think it was answered where the database has a whole other set of processes that it has to go through to store the data. Yeah. But I understand yeah, you just from a writing perspective, yeah. yeah. So just sort of... You said you have it set up so that it's like the it doesn't push. It doesn't send out the data until you're like closing the PHP session. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So, um, do you know register shutdown hook? Uh, no. Uh, so it's a PHP function that allows you to say do this after everything's done, um, essentially. So once it's already sent the response. Yeah. Um, it doesn't run if you die. Um, use the die function. Okay. Uh, so that's one worry about it, uh, which is why we also added the auto flush um, so that. Our long-running scripts, like our email script, we don't have to, you know, wait for that, which might take, you know, a day to run to end. We can get metrics being sent the entire time. But you know, a normal web page load, um, you know, hopefully should not be dying or having any sort of fatal exception. Right. Uh, yeah. So what was that again? Sorry. Oh. Uh, Before shutdown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Register shutdown. Right, register register shutdown. shutdown. It does exactly what it says on the tip. So you write a function. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, we do it, or, yeah, Fetric does it for you. Yeah. You uh, write a function, then you register it in PHP calls every time. Mm -hmm. 
if you take a look at the Fetcher code uh, in the sender class, um, you'll see it. Cool. Anything else? Any questions at large about uh, race cars? <laughs> so who's going to add metrics uh, to their application? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't be afraid. Be happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a bit. It's a bit to set up. Uh, our stuff is not really a bit set up. It's the metrics tracking servers are a bit cumbersome to set up, but really, it's really cool once you get all these things set up and you can. Uh, yeah, I mean, see once you have it, happening. you'll you know really be asking yourselves, how did I do you know work without this? And you don't worry nearly as much anymore uh, because you're like, oh, I can see that the metrics are still okay, and I know people can still use the site, not think it's working. Have you guys ever used that API stuff? Uh, we actually do, yeah. We use it in some of our Java APIs, yeah, in the back end, just for, yeah, like call rates and things, we actually do more of it, but, yeah. Do you have any success alerting off of abnormal metrics conditions? So we're actually working on that right now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our CTO is working on writing a thing that grabs the metrics, and for uh, what we showed earlier mm -hmm. in the presentation, we have a huge group of machines uh, just looking for ones that are abnormal. So, you know, here are these 60 machines, uh, which one doesn't look like the other ones? Um, and so, it, it, it's a way of, you know, you, you just don't want to write alerts for everything there could be. You just say, here are all the things that are happening, uh, what things are different. I mean, also with cyclical things, you know, maybe, you know, 500 uh, registrations at, you know, noon is low, you know, but 500 registrations at, you know, midnight is, you know, wow, we're doing a hell of a lot better than we thought we were. Um, and so, you know, like, you know, things are sick. People use sites, you know, <laughs> when they're awake. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but most people are tending to sleep when they're awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah. say the Fetrix code, you, you register functions into it, or you have to put. Uh, you, you just know, call the init. Uh, yeah, function. you just call the Fetrix init, um, you know, okay. with. A host of where you want to send it is the first parameter. The port that you want it to send on is the second one. Um, I need the string if you want to have something prepended for all the other metrics, and then you know find a boolean if you want it you know to send you know automatically or or you know as they come in or wait for the end. Wherever you want it to trigger, you put that in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you just do that, and then it will take care of all the actual sending, and you just have to add the metrics that you want to track. Question about race cars. I saw there was tennis balls and one got yes. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll get to race cars after we're so. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we definitely love to keep talking about metrics. Uh, yeah. you know, if you guys want to stick around um, or Drew uh, talk about race cars, race cars I, yeah. Yeah. Um, don't really drive. So but I can give it a The race cars are an operating part of our race car suspension. Um, but yeah, so stick around. Stuff, yeah. Ask us yeah. yeah. questions. Yeah. But, uh, we're both on Twitter, uh, and we are responsive there, so if you have specific questions, if you're trying to set things up, uh, let us know, because uh, as I said, it can be a bit confusing. Yeah. Um, these slides are up on GitHub, uh, you know, uh, short link is just jorb.in slash metric. Uh, we'll also make sure we add it to the uh, meetup page so you can just get to it. Uh, and finally, we are hiring, uh, so if you uh, want to come work at a company that likes to Build cool shit, open source it, um, share it with the world. And have race cars. And, yeah. and, and race cars. Yeah.